Microsoft Excel is a very popular spreadsheet tool to format and organize data with formulas and functions. It's got a wide range of use cases, including, but not limited to, these use cases. An Excel workbook can contain one or many worksheets, and each worksheet can handle up to a million rows of data. Hey, my name is Mo Chen, and I work as a data and analytics analyst within the financial services industry. When I first started working, Excel was the only tool I used for data analysis. I used basic functions such as sum, count, index match, and VLOOKUPs, and slowly moved on to writing some code in VBA. Since then, I learned to code in SQL and Python, and even Cypher now which I recently learned and is used for querying Neo4j graph databases. So, in today's video, I'd like to show you how and when I use Microsoft Excel nowadays, and if you stick around till the end, I'll show you when I decide to use other tools instead. So, without further ado, let's get started. The most common thing I use Excel for nowadays is quick, ad hoc data exploration, analysis, and visualization. And speaking of analysis, this video is sponsored by Equals. Say I want to track recent updates to our marketing spend, and I want it to update every week. Here's how simple it is to do in Equals. I can connect directly to my marketing spend table in Snowflake to build insights of real-time information. I can write a SQL query to pick the data I want to bring in, or if I didn't know SQL, I could just use the UI through the Query Builder. I can then schedule my query to run once a week at a time that I specify. What I like most about Equals is that I can use Command or Control K to access anything instantly using my keyboard only, which really speeds up my workflow. I can quickly add a filter, sort my data, freeze my headers in the top row, or format my data to be in US dollars and create a chart. So if you're interested, try out Equals for free using the link in the description below. Most applications and tools allow you to extract the data in CSV or Excel format, which comes in really handy when you want to do some quick one-off data analysis. You can use the core features of Excel to format your spreadsheet. You can quickly highlight the column names, adjust the row heights and column widths, and filter or sort your data. For ad hoc analysis, I use a variety of formulas and functions to clean up the data. Which formulas you'll use will always depend on the analysis you'd like to carry out. But let me just put a couple of formulas on the screen that you should definitely know by heart. After I'm done, with the initial data transformation, I move on to data analysis and visualization. I like to use pivot charts and pivot tables to get quick insights. They're simple, effective, and come in really handy when I need to get meaningful insights in a short time frame. What are some of your Excel use cases? Do you use it for accounting, data entry, or storage? Maybe financial modeling or something else? Let me know in the comments below. The second most common thing I tend to use Excel for nowadays is quick collaboration and data gathering from my stakeholders. There are times when I have to come up with quick insights and create mock-up dashboards using offline data that I need to get from others. Sometimes this data won't be available on a central system as it's sitting locally with business owners and subject matter experts. So, to create something out of nothing, a Tableau dashboard out of data that doesn't exist on any of the systems, I can easily create an Excel file in a central place like Microsoft Teams and ask my stakeholders to feed their local data directly into my offline spreadsheet. Of course, this process is clearly prone to human errors and is clearly not automated, but sometimes it's the only way of gathering this data quickly so that I can move forward and build my prototype dashboard. The ability to create something from scratch is extremely valuable at companies, 
and people are much more likely to buy into an actual dashboard than a proposed idea of what the dashboard would look like. It's much easier to provide feedback and criticize something that you can see and use rather than something that is completely intangible. Once you have the stakeholder buy-in, you can start working on automating the data gathering process by feeding the necessary metrics into a central system so that you can turn the manual task into an efficient business as usual task. Now, moving on to another use case, VBA, which stands for Visual Basic for Applications, and it's the programming language used by the Microsoft applications. Nowadays, I use only very basic VBA code, which mostly has to do with cleaning and transforming data, like removing empty spaces or certain unnecessary characters. Anything that you can do in Excel using the user interface, you can also do in VBA by writing code. You can either record a macro or write the code yourself from scratch, or what I'd like to do the most, a combination of both. I record my macros first to give me a starting point and then alter the code to fit my needs better. Please keep in mind that Excel has its limits in terms of computing power and how much data it can process. So I wouldn't use complex VBA code. Excel can handle a maximum of 1 million rows, which is not to say that you should actually try and get close to it. Make sure you don't turn your Excel file into somewhat of a database where you store large amounts of data. There comes a point after which Excel will break and you'll run into lots of error messages. The largest Excel files I worked with were around the 150 megabyte range. The files crashed frequently and when Excel did run, it was extremely slow. This is the point where you should switch to other tools. You could say, for example, use Python to insert your data into a database and then query your database using code. I actually made a video recently on how you can use Python to manipulate SQL databases. The link is in the description below if you want to check it out. And that's it. This is the end of the video. If you liked it, you should check out some of my other videos right here. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.